Welcome to Physics Learning. This is the seventh lecture on thermodynamics, and in this video, I am going to derive an expression for work done in various quasi-static processes. Also, I am going to discuss about the enthalpy from first law of thermodynamics point of view. I will going to derive an expression for enthalpy. We will begin with work done in isothermal expansion or isothermal compression of an ideal gas. Isothermal means temperature remains constant throughout the process okay what is work done we know for a hydrostatic system work done is equals to pressure into change in volume and if volume of the system changes from vi to vf then total work done will be integration over vi to vf pdv right this is the expression now as we are doing for ideal gas that means we need to use ideal gas equation which is pv equals to nrt where n is number of mole t is temperature r is molar gas constant by using this equation of state we just need to plug the value of p in terms of t and v just plug it here as n is constant r is constant t is constant it will come out and we will have integration over vi to vf dv upon v right now if you integrate it 1 over v it will be log v and after plugging the limits you will have work done equals to n r t t is the temperature of the system and log vf upon vi this is the expression for isothermal expansion of an ideal gas or isothermal compression of an ideal gas if vf is greater than vi then it will be expansion and if vf is less than vi it will be compression okay now we will do same exercise for van der waal gas van der waal gas means real gas right the work done in an isothermal expansion or compression of van der waal gas that is those gas which follows the van der waal equation of state basically these are the real gases right we will start with the same work relation work done is equals to integration over vi to vf pdv because gas is a hydrostatic system okay now here in order to replace this p we will use van der waal equation of state so if you use equation of state for van der waal gas from there you can easily calculate p is equals to rt upon v minus b minus a upon v square okay what is equation of state for an van der waal gas equation of state will be p plus a upon v square times v minus b is equals to rt for one mole okay here a b called van der waal gas constant t is temperature r is molar gas constant just plug the value of p in the work done and we will have this expression here if you integrate this and plugging the values of limit you will have work done equals to rt times ln vf minus b upon vi minus a plus a times 1 upon vf minus 1 upon vi okay so this is the work done for an isothermal expansion of van der waal gas if vf is greater than vi it will be expansion and if vf is less than vi it will be compression next we will do work done in adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas what is adiabatic expansion the process in which there is no heat exchange between system and surrounding takes place those kinds of processes are called adiabatic process we will going to derive the work done for an adiabatic process here work done is pdv integration over vi to vf now in order to use the adiabatic condition we must use the adiabatic relation which i have derived in the last lecture and from that relation we can easily say pv to the power gamma is equals to k which is a constant and gamma is cp upon cv we have to use this equation in order to replace the p and if you use this relation just replace p by k times v to the power minus gamma and k is constant so it will come outside this integration if you integrate it you will have k upon gamma minus 1 vi to the power 1 minus gamma minus vf to the power 1 minus gamma just simple integration and then substitution of limit right 
we know pv to the power gamma equals to constant therefore we can write k as pi vi to the power gamma or k as pf vf to the power gamma by using that relation if you substitute the values of k you will get pi vi minus pf vf upon gamma minus 1 now again we need to use equation of state for an ideal gas as pv equals to rt from that relation i can write pi vi is equals to rti and pf vf is equals to rtf just substitute that values and r will be common ti minus tf what is r r is cp minus cv what is gamma gamma is cp upon cv if you substitute those values here you will get w is equals to cv times ti minus tf this is work done in an adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas now let's try to derive the work done for different kinds of system that is different from the gaseous system let's say work done on a wire if the length of a wire under a tension f is changes from l to l plus dl then what will be the work done we have a wire and we are putting a tension from the both ends and under the action of that tension the length of wire changes from l to l plus dl in that case we can write work done in extending the length by an amount dl will be minus tension times dl why there is a negative sign negative sign is indicating that work done on the system we are stretching the wire in order to elongate it so we are doing work on the wire and work done on a system is negative so dw is equals to minus f time dl if there is a finite change in length from li to lf then work done will be you just need to integrate it from li to lf so this is the work done on a wire if you have expression for tension if you know the expression for tension if you know the exact value of li and lf you just need to integrate this and you will get the work done similarly if you want to calculate the work done on different systems for example suppose we have a surface film and that surface film is under action of surface tension s in that case for a finite change of the area of a surface film from ai to af under action of surface tension s in that scenario the work done will be integration over ai to af s times da with a negative sign again why there is a negative sign because work done on the system so you have to perform this integration similarly suppose we have a magnetic system and that uh, system is under the action of magnetic field and due to uh, action of that magnetic field there is change in magnetization of that system and magnetization changes from mi to mf under that scenario the work done will be minus integration over mi to mf h times dm so by performing this integration you can easily calculate the work done on different kinds of system right just take an example of different system try to find out the cause and the effect and then do the integration okay let's move out to the enthalpy enthalpy is an important thermodynamic potential which i have already discussed during the lecture series of thermodynamics potential which is a part of advanced thermodynamics but now i am covering the basic thermodynamic so here we can derive the expression for enthalpy from first law of thermodynamics point of view first law of thermodynamics says that delta q is equals to du plus pdv here delta q is the change in heat du is change in internal energy and pdv is the work done if you assume that u and v both are dependent on temperature and pressure so under that scenario u will be a function of temperature and pressure and as a result the change in u you can calculate it as rate of change of u with respect to temperature at constant pressure into change in temperature plus rate of change of internal energy with respect to pressure at constant temperature into change in pressure right similarly for v you can also write v as a function of temperature and pressure as a result dv is equals to del v del t p dt plus 
del B del P T dP. Right? We just need to plug this equation 2 and equation 3 in equation 1 and we will have this expression. Okay? Now, assume that pressure is constant. That is isobaric case. For an isobaric case, if dP is equals to 0, we will have delta Q. You can evaluate from this relation. And after evaluating that delta Q, we can define CP. CP as delta Q upon del T P. Right? P is here for the constant pressure. From this expression, I can simply write this is equals to del U del T P plus P times del V del T P. This I have already derived this expression. This whole calculation is already done in the part of specific heats. Okay. So from here onward, we can start our concept of enthalpy. Now CP is this. If you want to write it in the compact form, you can simply write the right hand side as del del T in bracket U plus PV. Here U plus PV becomes a function, right? So we can define a new function H. H is equals to U plus PV and this H is known as enthalpy. And as U is a state function, P times V is an state function. Therefore, H is also a state function. And hence, I can write simply Cp as del H del T P. This is a thermodynamic potential and this is very important when you will study the joule thomson effect. Enthalpy plays a very important role in understanding of joule thomson effect. Okay, which I have already explained in the joule thomson effect lecture. If you want, you can watch that, but that is the advanced part of this thermodynamics. We will try to see some of the numerical problem related to this chapter. And after that, we will start the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so see you in the next lecture. Thank you.